folks, how about a hand for the comedy of Tony Esposito? <laughs> Woo! I shouldn't have ran. That was stupid. <laughs> don't tell you, don't. I gotta. I suffer from a very rare disease. Uh, it's it's called bulimic amnesic disorder. I'll exp I'll explain. I binge, and then I forget to purge. <laughs> yeah, just eating. I'm wandering around a half hour later. Let's get a pizza. How you guys in the front doing? You okay? You look you look nervous. Are you nervous? She, she, she has that look. He could fall down and kill eight of us. I'm not going to fall, but I sweat a lot. I sweat up here. It's, it's kind of like going to see Shamu. You're down in the splash zone. Enjoy that. I can't help it. I'm a big fellow. I'm a product of my environment. Uh, I'm from the South originally. Uh, the, the, real, the real South, not South Nantucket. Yeah, yeah. Where about, I, I grew up in Florida, which I know is not real... Real South, don't leave. Yeah, they're like, that's the Florida man. I'm not the Florida man. I got, a lot of people don't know if they live in the South or not. You know how you can tell if you live in the South? Go to the nearest Waffle House. Stand in that parking lot. If you can look down the street and see another Waffle House, your ass is in the South. <laughs> we don't leave a mile uncovered. You never know when you're going to need that emergency waffle. And I can always tell when I'm working up north because uh, when you mention the Waffle House, people from up north will give you that, oh, oh, I would never eat at a Waffle House. It's so filthy in there. Look, you can go to one of these five-star French restaurants. You have no idea what they're doing in the kitchen. They could drop your food on the floor and you wouldn't be like, <laughs> let it go. Not at the Waffle House. You watch that cook, right? You see everything he does. He drops your toast. You're like, uh-uh, Bo Cephas, I've seen that. <laughs> of course, the guy next to you is drunk enough to eat toast off the floor. He doesn't care. I love the Waffle House, but I'm not going to lie to you. The waitresses scare the hell out of me at the Waffle House. You ever seen a Waffle House waitress? They, they're, they're none of them here. You don't, <laughs> yeah, they can't afford Nantucket. Are you kidding me? They are rough. The Waffle House waitresses are rough. They always look like they just got out of a boxing match. Just all swole up, teeth are missing. And, and I live back home in Charlotte. I live right across the street from a Waffle House. I do. I live in a Cracker Barrel. <laughs> Big porch, a lot of rocking chairs. It's beautiful. I do, live, I do live right across the street from a Waffle House, and unfortunately for me, it is the one Waffle House in the entire country that my wife will not eat at. And she won't eat at this one particular Waffle House because there's a waitress in there that's only got four fingers. And it freaks my wife out. She'll tell me, I'm not going in there because we're going to get that four-fingered waitress. I said, honey, she has a name. It doesn't say four-fingered Betty on her name tag. She goes, I don't care. I'm not going in there. And it pisses me off because I, I, I love the Waffle House. And, my, and my, my, my wife is a huge Disney fan. We lived near, near Disney when we lived in Florida. She loves, I go, baby, you love Mickey Mouse and he's only got four fingers. <laughs> she didn't miss a beat. She said, Mickey Mouse wears gloves. <laughs> so we just go to the Waffle House five minutes down the street. I grew up eating good Southern food. My mom is from the heart of, the, uh, heart of Dixie. My mom was born and raised in L.A. And... Uh, that's lower Alabama for you non-Southerners. <laughs> but my dad is not from the South. My dad is actually a first-generation Italian. Uh, any, any Italians in here tonight? Three? Okay. There's more, but they're in the witness protection program. I'm Irish. Forget about him. And that's a horrible combination of food if you're trying to lose weight. Southern and Italian food, you, you can't lose weight eating pork chop parmesan. You can't do it. You ever chicken fried a meatball? That's all fat. It's 100% fat. And I got a big family. I got big ass family. Big family. I, I, I got not numbers big. We're all fat. Uh, and every Thanksgiving, I had to sit next to my fat ass Uncle Frank. And that, that's, his, that's his real name. I'm not making it up. Fat ass Frank. It's on his birth certificate. Yeah. And they, yeah, they knew he was going to be big. <laughs> 
And he, he literally outweighs me by about 150 pounds. But every time we get together, he is the first guy to give me diet advice, right? He'll lean over halfway through a meal and be like, hey, Tony, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, if you stand up after your first plate, you unleash a pocket down here, get a whole nother plate down. All right, let's do it, Mom. Bring out them chitlins, Alfredo. I am ready. <laughs> Tough being a big guy this day and age. I tell you, we got any big fellows in here tonight by round of applause? Any big fellows? Okay, we're, we're in a little bit of denial here in Nantucket. Uh, it's dark, but it ain't that dark. I see some people. Out there. <laughs> yes. There's always three or four fat guys. We ain't as fat as him. Don't clap for them. We got we, we to gotta stick together, big fellas. No, not literally. We'll mess shit up. We got, I mean, but unity. There's a lot of discrimination going on against overweight people. I mean, everywhere you go, first off, people want to give you diet advice. Everybody wants to give you diet advice. I was in line at the airport a few weeks ago, and there was a woman behind me, and she was wearing one of those. Uh, she was, she was a, a, a fitness nut, and I could tell she was a fitness nut because she was in a track suit, and she was jogging in place while we're waiting to get our ticket, right? And she was one of these diet nuts, and she was wearing that button. You ever see them people wear that button that said, want to lose weight? Ask me how. And I could feel her staring at me. So I turned around, and I stared back at her for a second. And I picked her up, and I ate her right there in the line. And hey, she was fit. That's a healthy choice on my part, right? Had a little trouble getting that button down. That hurt. Hurt, hurt me twice, now that I think about it. I, I, I've been trying to lose weight. I, had, I, I lost my membership at the gym. I got kicked out of my gym, believe it or not. I did have a gym membership. And I'll, I'll tell you what happened. I'm not ashamed of it. I was, I was in the gym, and I was working out, and I was on that machine. And uh, I don't know if you have these particular machines at your gym, but uh, you, you hit the buttons, and it gives you a Coke. I don't know if you've seen these. Uh, and I was working it. I had my foot in the hole and everything. <laughs> Manager came up. He was mad as hell. He says, man, get, get out of here. People think this ain't working. He, he even gave me a $20 bill. He said, Krispy Kreme is just down the street. The light's on. And I, I hit it up. I love some Krispy Kreme. Y'all don't have them up here, do you? You have Krispy Kreme? Oh, they are so good, man. I, I, tell, I would bob for them if they let me. That's how good they are. A lot of sugar in them things, though. You can't eat it. If you're a diabetic and you eat a Krispy Kreme, your leg falls off right there in the store. Just see people hopping out on one leg. That's the best donut I've ever had. I've been big my whole life, though. I'm used to it. Even when I was a little kid, I was heavy. And you remember the number one sport in elementary school, right? They had dodgeball. Yeah, I heard Karen talk about that. Brought back some PTSD for me, yeah. Yeah, that's not a fun sport when you're the fat kid. <laughs> Here comes Tony. Hey, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm, I'm, I'm out. Fuck, I'm out. You see me over here trying to eat this Snickers, you know I've been out. It was one of them little fun size Snickers in my defense. You know them little talk about them little fun size? I don't know why they call that a fun size. No one's ever had fun with that much Snickers. Make a six-foot-tall Snickers. That's a fun size, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just carry it over your shoulder. I got Snickers. Woo! Yeah, tough. And I, high, high school was rough, too. I, I, didn't have a lot, I didn't have a lot of luck with the ladies in high school. And I know that's shocking when you look at all this. Uh, I, I'm, uh, I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't have a lot of luck with the ladies in high school, so I had to... Um, Oh, what's the word I'm looking for here? <laughs> Masturbate is the clinical term. <laughs> yes, sir, right here in the front. You masturbate, sir? Right here? Not, not right here, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Here with us, yeah, she, she, here with a beautiful lady and still tell you. A lot of guys aren't that confident. I, every show I've ever done that joke at, there's always one guy in the audience going, I don't jerk off. I don't have to. I don't have to. I just really like to. I like it. <laughs> it's lonely on the road. I travel for a living, man. Why, why do you think they put that little bottle of lotion in every hotel room in America? 
that is not for ladies. Y'all bring your own fancy stuff. That is old unscented man lotion. That's what that is. <laughs> and stay away from that scented lotion, fellas. Stay away from the scented lotion. It'll play tricks on your mind. You walk outside, smell a rose bush, get an erection for no reason at all. Man. Oh, oh, is that cucumber melon? All right, yeah. <laughs> Woo. But believe it or not, despite my appearance, I'm actually married uh, to a woman. Yeah, I know, I know what y'all think. He married that big Snickers he was talking about. <laughs> Love being married. I hated dating. I was so glad to be married and out of the dating scene. I, t I tell you what, man, we, we got any, uh, anybody here on a date tonight or any couples that are not married yet? Your friends will point you out. I'll find you. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, yeah. how, how you doing? How, okay. how long y'all been together? Almost two years. What, what's your name, sir? I'm Nick. Nick and? Mary. Nick and Mary. Hi, hi, nice to meet you. Hi, two, you've been together for two years. Congratulations. Uh, I'm going to tell you all right now, if you are meant to be together forever, or if you've made a huge mistake and you should go your separate ways after the... <laughs> and, uh, you've been, and, and this is free. I'm not going to charge you. I know they charge for everything here in Nantucket. Uh, Uh, so, uh, Mary, two years. Now, in the two years that you've been with Nick, does he, does he fart on you? You heard him pass the gas? Has he farted? <laughs> she laughed. That's a yes. Okay. <laughs> Nick, you ever hear her pass the gas? Fart on? Absolutely. Oh, that, yeah, that don't, Mary, don't be ashamed. That's, that's a beautiful, you find a woman you can play fart games with. That is a beautiful that is like Helen Keller and Ray Charles playing tennis together. This is love all the time. You're ahead of the game, Nick, man. You should marry her. Marry her tomorrow. You got you a marrying woman. I dated my wife for three years. That's a long time to hold a fart, Nick. You can't do it. And I played every game that women, that we play guys when we're dating a woman and we don't know like when the right time to drop the bomb is. Like I used to do the old coffin fart, you know what I'm talking about? Try to add some sound in there. <laughs> Wait over there, honey. I'm contagious. <laughs> Men have gone to great lengths to hide their gas from women. I, I got a buddy went out and bought his wife a teacup poodle to blame farts on. Now, in theory, that's a great idea, but in reality, no one has ever seen a little poodle go, "Hey, princess, oh, that's a good girl." We got a big dog at home. Now I can get it, and I hear this dog fart all the time, right? So I figured, hey, I can let I can let a little one go on. The, and my wife was in the kitchen, right? And I call him over. He's a big dog. We have a, a, a bull mastiff. This dog is almost two hundred and forty pounds, just massive. And I call him over. I'm like, Max, come here. And I just let a little one go, just a little like that, right? And I sell it. I yell out, like, Max, you are a bad dog. Yeah, bad. My, and my wife is in the kitchen. Max, get in here. He's gonna shit all over you. When you're in the car, that's a tough spot, though, when you're in a car, right? Because it's airtight. There's no, yeah, you got the dogs to blame it on. So that's when I do the old car trouble trick, right? My wife doesn't know shit about cars. We'll be driving along, and I just shake the wheel a little bit. I'm like, oh, honey, you feel that? Yeah, I think we torn the rotator cuff, and there's... It's by the flux capacitor. I drive the DeLorean from Back to the Future. <laughs> I say, honey, I'm going to pull over and check it out because I want. I, I, you, you, now it's hot out there and it's dangerous. You stay in here and I'll be right back. I'm going to check it out because I love you. I go, Let me check the one in the back, honey. Hold on. Oh, we hit a duck. I think we ran over a duck. Now, remember, fellas, if you got jeans on, don't rush back into that car. You know a fart to run around in jeans for a few minutes, right? Yeah, you get in too fast, you bring in that vapor trail. She's like, oh my, what is that? I think I stepped in some shit when I was fixing this car. I, I will never forget my very first date with my wife. Uh, she had to work late, so we went and we caught a late movie, and afterwards we thought we'd pick up something quick to eat. Only place open was Taco Bell. In retrospect, that was a horrible idea. Because by the time we got to her house, I had to drop the chalupas. Uh, and I couldn't wait for I, I I couldn't wait for her to get out of the car. I'm like, oh, have you have a great night? I give her a peck on the cheek. She got out. She shut the door. And I thought, oh, coast is clear. And I let this thing go, man. It was like a, people thought a cruise ship was pulling in, right? 
And it smelled horrible. I mean, it smelled so bad it would have made an onion cry. And as I go to pull out of the driveway, all of a sudden I hear on my window, I left my purse. I'll mail it to you. Believe it or not, too, not only am I married, I got three kids, uh, got, uh, got a 16-year-old boy and uh, 13-year-old twins. Uh, yeah. Uh, anybody have twins? Yeah. Twi- yeah, twin. Yeah, People ask me all the time, and my friends always come up and ask, hey, Tony, what's it like owning twins? <laughs> well, I own them, right? I, yeah, I, I feed them, put them back in their cage at night. I do all that shit. Uh, they, break, they break something, I got to pay for it. <laughs> And, I, and the best analogy I can give anybody, this might be a little raw, but I said, having twins is like owning two little goats, right? They, yeah, and, I, and the reason I say that is they eat everything like goats, they shit everywhere like goats, and they talk to each other in some kind of secret twin goat language, right? Oh, when they're, when they're toddlers, they, and they, come, they come down the stairs, I'm cooking, and they look at each other like, meh, meh, meh. and I know they're talking about me. Oh, yeah. And one of my twins, when, when he was young, he was poop shy. You know what I mean by poop shy? He would not poop in the potty. He would go hide and poop, right? And, and I knew that he was pooping because it'd be quiet, right? And I'd walk, I'd, I'd walk in there and I'd hear him in the closet, like just grunting. I open that door. I said, are you pooping? He's like, no. Then he lit up a cigarette. He's like, oh, dad. Get some wet wipes. I tore the ass out of him. Yeah, and, 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 and one day he came running across the living room like he had something important to do. And I knew he was going to go hide to poop, right? And he was running. And you know how when kids are toddlers and they got that big ass head, but they still got that little body? Sometimes that head gets in front of them and you know they're going to fall, right? And he, he was. He was doing that. And he did a header right into the corner of our coffee table. I mean, boom, right. Scared the hell out of me. I looked at my wife. I didn't know what I said. I don't know. I don't I think he might be, he might be dead, honey. I don't Thank God we made two of those. Uh, what do we do? Put them in the freezer, spare parts for the other one? I don't know what we do here. My wife knew what to do. Moms know what to do, right? She knew right away you can't let the kid know he's hurt, right? So immediately she jumps up and pulls keys out of her purse and starts jingling them and singing to him, right? And he got up and was so excited. He tried to get them keys. He didn't care, right? He didn't even realize he had a new head growing out of the side of his own head. That's insane to me because when they, yeah, but when you're a kid, you're resilient. You can take them kind of falls, right? If you're an adult and you get hammered drunk and you're running through the party and you smash your head open on a coffee table, when you wake up, no, one, no one's going to stand over you and go, hey, man, wake up. You got to sing to him. It's a busy spider. Ugh. So I got to, I got two more days here in Nantucket. That's awesome. I'm excited about that. I uh, did a little research on Nantucket. Uh, found out that Nantucket is an Indian word for no place to park. Uh, yeah, you, you run out of gas. Just leave your people. Just leave their car in the streets and shit. Nobody cares. I do. I like it up here. I did not. Uh, I did not enjoy my my flight here though. Uh, I, I had to fly over on that Cape Air. Y'all, y'all been on the Cape Air? That's yeah, and flying is a pain in the ass for fat people to begin with, right? And and, and that flight too. I'll, I'll, we had a, it's the, it's one of the few flights where they asked my wife had never my wife traveled with me. She'd never been on one of these tiny planes before, and they ask your weight right before you get on, right? And uh, and the woman in front of us who was uh, just she was just a heifer, uh, uh, <laughs> to put it kindly. And I couldn't help but over here when the lady asked her how much she weighed, she told her she weighed about 130 pounds. And I thought, well, shit, man, now I got to tell these people I weigh 500 or we're all going to die. <laughs> Scariest plane I've ever been on, man. That's a phone booth with wings in little planes. I don't know how y'all do it. And I hate flying. Flying, like I said, it's a pain in the ass for fat people. And I I recently had to fly on one of the worst airlines I've been on in quite a while. I had the misfortune of flying on Southwest about two months ago. Everybody ever fly on Southwest? 
Yeah, what a piece of shit. That's the bus of the skies. Uh, and I got two issues with Southwest, and this is a true story. Number, they were the first issue. They were the first airline ever to try to charge an overweight person for two tickets. I got up to the counter, and they wanted to weigh me. I said, "Bitch, if you make me buy two tickets, you better give me two sandwiches when I get in here." <laughs> and I want to see some reverse discrimination. These skinny people can fit in the overhead or in the pockets in front. You free up some room for these fat people. Second issue I have with Southwest, if you've ever been on there, they do not give you an assigned seat, right? Everybody lines up in a rodeo cage and a bell goes off. And people just start running in there like a bunch of godless heathens just fighting for seats, right? And I got on the plane last. It's always fun when you get on the plane last and you're the fat guy, right? Because <laughs> you know you got to walk down that aisle and rub your ass on 50 people. You're like, excuse me, pardon me. Oh, look how fast you got on. <laughs> right there in the front. You enjoy this swamp ass. I'm headed to the back. <laughs> I get all the way to the back of this plane where I, I, I have a middle seat with, you know, between two gorgeous women that I'm going to be sweating on for the next two and a half hours. Because my air never works. Every plane I get on, my air never works. I get the one that blows out hot air and smells like gasoline. Right? Uh, and and, and I, we, I will say this in defense of Southwest. They gave us a meal, which is very rare. If you fly on planes now, you know that they don't give you a meal in coach. And uh, they, it was an early flight, and they gave us a breakfast burrito. Yeah, again, uh, yeah, I, it was a huge mistake for me because now I got to use an airline bathroom, which is a coffin for a man my size, right? I got in that bathroom and I'm trying to turn around and my, one of my belt loops gets caught on the light and it's blinking and I'm trying to, and the other one is caught on the flusher and it's just like a disco in there for 15 minutes, right? And I finally break free and I get on there to sit down on the toilet. Well, you know, the Murphy's Law, as soon as I sit on that toilet, we hit turbulence, right? And I started, and that blue water was all over my, I looked like an avatar when I got out of there. <laughs> Oh, it's tough. I, I mentioned to you, I did mention I have three boys and, I, and I'll, I'll tell you this, man. I, I, it, 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 when I grew up, it was so much different. It was such a different time to when my boys grew up. We, we are so safety conscious now with kids. It is insane. Like all the, all the, all the precautions that we take for kids right now, uh, like everything, uh, when, when your kid was born, uh, like now, if, they, if anybody in here has had a kid in the last 15, 20 years, you'll know what I'm talking about. Before you can bring your baby home from the hospital that you made, you have to bring in a certified approved car seat and you have to show a doctor and a nurse that you know how to put your kid in this car seat before you can take your own baby home that you made, right? I, I, my parents have pictures of me going home on the dashboard of their car. <laughs> my dad's like, mm, yeah, roll the windows up. You're letting the smoke out. <laughs> Yeah, and so now you got to you have to prove to these people. So, and my wife, our first kid, our first kid. Let me tell you, oh, the first, the first child. She so safety. We should, we should goes. You got to get a, this particular car seat. It's made out of space age polymer plastic. It's got a fifteen point harness. It's NASA approved. And I did. I went out and I bought this monstrosity of a car seat. Right, and now I got this car seat up there, and I'm supposed to help. I'm a guy, I, now the nurses and the doctors are watching me like it's a test, and I got to put my kid in this car seat with this. And I had never even held a newborn baby before. Right? Yeah, I, I read all the books. I knew like. Like you, you got to hold their head at the right angle and they got a like a spot up here you can't even touch that or it's game over uh yeah like a reset button something i don't know <laughs> i read enough of the books um uh, and when you, and you, but they don't tell you this. Whenever you hold a newborn, you don't realize they are 90% head, 10% body, right? So I put him in that car seat, and every time I put him in that car seat, his big ass head would fall down. I'd push it up, and it'd fall down, and push. And finally, I lost it right there in front of the nurses and talks. I'm, would you just get your head? And he starts crying. I'm screaming, would you get your fucking head? I had to take an anger management course before I could bring my children home from the hospital. And it's, everything is so safe now. We're, it's over safe for kids now. Like even the simplest things like, uh, uh, like the park. You ever, you, ever, you ever take your kids to any of these new parks that they make now? Oh, the, everything is soft plastic, soft plastic slides, foam ground, soft plastic slides. Remember our slides, sheet metal slides that heated up to about 7,000 degrees in the summer? <laughs> kids are going down, bursting in the flame. <laughs> Ah! 
they took out the best ride in the park. You, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, that spinning merry-go-round to death. You remember that thing? Yeah, there's always some fat kid like me wanting to pull 50 Gs on that thing. The skinny kids are going, slow down, you fat ass guy. <laughs> you guys have been great. That's my time. I appreciate it. Have a good one.